Call to order, this is the 10th regular meeting of the 2010-2011 Common Council. And as is customary, our city clerk, Sue Richards, will read the quote of the evening. Thank you, Mayor. Leadership, the ability to see what no one else sees, to listen when others talk, and the ability to be optimistic when others are pessimistic. Nice quote, thank you, Sue. You're welcome. Pledge of Allegiance, uh, or roll call, please, if we can do a roll call first. Warren? Here. Falk? Aye. Bowers? Here. Decker? Here. Hammond? Here. Hannah? Here. Heideman? Here. Koth? Here. Kittleson? Excused. Montemayor? Here. Radke? Here. Rinfleisch? Here. Vanderweel? Here. Versi? Here. And Wangaman? Here. 14 present. We have a quorum. Uh, now if uh, Alderperson Vanderweel can please join us or lead us in the <laughs> Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Jody. Uh, looking for approval of the minutes of the prior Common Council meeting. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve under discussion. If there is none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Resignations, Attorney McLean. Uh, <clears throat> there's one email from uh, Alderman uh, Dennis Radke uh, to the mayor and the alder persons advising that uh, due to recent events in his life, he'd be moving out of the first district. Uh, res resignations effective tomorrow, August 17, 2010. We have a motion to approve. I move that we accept and approve the resignation. Reluctantly second. We have a motion and a reluctant second under discussion. Um, on my behalf, uh, Alderman Radke, um, we hate to see you leaving the second district, seeing as that is my home district. Uh, but we wish you luck uh, being a resident in the first district. Thank you. In a second, under discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> Attorney McLean. And a letter to the mayor from uh, Ernest M. Kepler advising that uh, he's resigning from the city's Capital Improvements Commission uh, because he's completed his, the final phase of his move from the city to Cedar Lake. Is that lying? Uh, motion to accept the resignation. Move to accept the uh, resignation. Second. We have a motion and, ex and a second to accept. Uh, I thank uh, uh, Mike Kepler. He's been a longtime resident of the city and on uh, many, uh, many uh, different committees. Uh, he's been a, uh, a heck of a, a great resident and uh, has had some great input over the years on city issues. And uh, we will miss him in the city. Wish him luck out at Cedar Lake. And I'm sure anybody that gets out there, you may see him around. We have a motion and a second to accept under discussion. There is none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mayor's appointments, Attorney McLean. Uh, there's a <clears throat> email from the, uh, from the county advising that the Chairman Mike Vanderstein has appointed Supervisor Thomas Epping to the City County Shared Services Committee replace Mickey Annick, who resigned from the county board effective August 1st. That uh, lies over, correct? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Does that lie over? That doesn't matter of reference, so we could just file tonight. To Motion file. to file. Motion to second to file. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And uh, <clears throat> Alderperson Don Hammond to be appointed to the following committees to fill the unexpired term of James Gisha. Strategic Fiscal Plan Committee, Capital Improvements Commission, City County Shared Services Committee, Sheboygan Transit Commission, Sheboygan or Special Committee on Risk Management, all the terms expiring 4-18-2011. Uh, Alderman Eric Rinfleisch to be appointed to the Finance Committee to fill the unexpired term of James Gisha, term expiring 4-18-2011. Alderman Don Hammond to replace James Gisha as Chairman of Finance Committee. James Bourne to be appointed.
Industrial Development Commission to fill the unexpired term of James Gisha, term expiring 4 16 2012, signed by the mayor. Mr. Mayor, I move that uh, we accept um, the appointments as listed on by uh, City Attorney McLean. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept. Uh, if I just may clarify for the public and the alderman, um, Alderman Hammond, uh, with being uh, moved up to the chairman of the Finance Committee. These other five committees come along with being the chairman of the Finance Committee, just so we don't think that Alderman Hammond is the, is the chosen alderman of the day. Under discussion. If there is none, all in favor say aye. 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 We need to do a roll call. Oh, we need to do a roll call on this. Roll call, please. Thank you. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Longeman? Aye. And Boren? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Attorney McLean. Robert Ryan to be appointed to the Tax Incremental District TID number six joint review board. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that uh, we accept uh, the uh, appointment, approve the appointment. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve under discussion. Roll call. Mm -hmm. There is none. Roll call, please. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Koth. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Vanderwill. Aye. Versi. Aye. Wangeman. Aye. Boren. Aye. And Bauk. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Uh, we do have one more appointment, uh, which is uh, James Amodio to be the new finance director. However, we will hold that for document number 10-38 uh, to be approved first before the uh, before the appointment is uh, considered. Moving on. Um, Those were confirmations. Those were confirmations. Yeah. Moving on to the public forum. Sue? Yes, this evening the first on our public forum is Lee Montemayor, Jr. And Lee, could I have your home address, please? 1015 Logan, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. Oh, no. Or me. August 4th, we uh, had the committee of the whole meeting here. And uh, with regard to the uh, possible binding referendum in November election on whether we should privatize the ambulance service once again. The report that Alderman Bowers offered was pretty much a criticism of, the, of our finance department. The CPA did the best she could with the misinformation supplied to her. When questioned her, her criticism of the city's accounting procedures, her answers were, I don't know. Let me state at this time that this could be a mistake if the referendum is passed. I urge you to heed City Attorney McLean's advice. If not, you may once again be putting yourself into a corner as was done in the 1990s. That resulted in being stuck with a monopoly type subsidized ambulance service with little control. The last time we had an advisory referendum on the ambulance service, the citizens voted yes to an ambulance service run by the city, run by the Sheboygan Police Department. The vote count was 9265 to 4436. However, the state mandated requirements were to play a big factor in the question, the operations of the ambulance service in all communities in Wisconsin. Our city's fathers listened to the citizens and started to replace the obsolete procedures and equipment that needed to be, to be in compliance with the state of Wisconsin mandates of 1989. Qualifications to further educate our employees from basic EMT to AMT intermediate was one such requirement with paramedics being the other option with both hospitals had requested. The mandated requirement for replacement of paddy wagons or patrol wagons with real-type vehicles with life-saving equipment and personnel. 
The city ordered the new ambulances, but soon found out their specifications were incorrect because the vehicles were too, were not big enough to carry the required equipment and employees. The city reordered the new ambulance and corrected the problem. Education, then, of then present employees to run, ran into council opposition due to budgetary concerns and the council decided the taxpayers could not afford to comply with the education requirements and abolish the city-run ambulance service. We chose instead to private ambulance service. Instead, to, instead of educating our employees, we chose to subsidize a private company. The city then put an ambulance service up for bids. Curtis Ambulance was awarded the, orange, the contract over Orange Cross, a jointly owned company by Memorial and St. Nicholas Hospital. Curtis was given a five-year contract on June 19th of 89 with stipulation that Curtis would have paramedic at level service in the place by April 1 of 90. Curtis began the, the service in October of 89, contractually meeting all the state requirements for medical service. Sheboygan County at that time was subsidizing Orange Cross Ambulance with $70,000 annually to serve the part of the county. The city, the, she the city of Sheboygan being part of the county was also subsidizing the private company, Orange Cross. This subsidization was to grow to $95,000 annually. Now a number of events started to happen after the awarding of the ambulance service to Curtis. On October 31 of 90, the medical director of St. Nicholas assigned to Curtis suddenly resigned and St. Nicholas refused to replace him with another doctor. The state requires a medical doctor to serve medical control and supervise emergency medical service above EMT basic level. That broke Curtis's contract with the city. Curtis was dropped at the end of November 90 and a 90 day, 90 day contract was awarded to Orange Cross on a trial basis. During the next year, the, Shore, the fire department was asked if they would be interested in supplying the city of Sheboygan with ambulance service. The fire department answered yes, but it would take some years to accomplish with natural attrition and the change requiring medical, education, and experience of newly hired firemen in the fire department. A plan was submitted to start this program, and now we have a highly regarded, experienced, ambulance service operated by city employees supplying tax relief revenues for the taxpayers of Sheboygan. Excuse me, Lee, would you like your extra minute? I would like another minute, thank you. I'd like a motion to grant that. Second. Second. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you. Orange Cross is still in business and operates it as a tax exempt company that pays no taxes but uses all its services furnished to the citizens of Wisconsin. We subsidize this company with the labor of first responders to all 911 calls. They do not share any of their revenues with the city of Sheboygan. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have an ideal setup with a city-run ambulance service along with the private sector. It's a win-win type of service. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Thank you, Lee. Thank you. Next. Uh, next this evening would be Dick Susha. Dick, can I have your home address, please? <clears throat> 15 North Point Drive. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. We, the Sheboygan County Taxpayers Alliance, do not think it necessary to slow down the referendum process by including confusing dollar figures in a straightforward question. Should the ambulance service be a private or public venture? Four years ago when the issue was debated, the then fire chief stated that if the fire department ambulance service lost money, the city could take the money out of the fire division. Remember that? Was that a prediction of things to come? The thrust of the new service was to preserve jobs as stated by our current fire chief. It was not being touted as a big money maker for the city's 
general fund. The SCTA and the Boygan Committee have questioned the accuracy of any profit, 400,000, 600,000. Even Terry Hansen, in his five scenarios, projected a long-term loss in each scenario. Why expect the referendum question to answer these dollar figures and further confuse the public? The financial report has yet to be released to the alderman or the public. If ramifications are to be in black and white, then add one line from the CPA. That is, the bottom line is, the ambulance service run by the fire department will continue to cost the taxpayers each year. We ask for a simply stated up or down vote on the issue by our citizens. Do not gum it up with political numbers, political wording, or financial numbers. Any further muddy <coughs> of the waters will only delay this from getting on the November ballot at <coughs> the end of this month by the end of August. The question on a November ballot, this November ballot, will not cost the city any extra expense. Do not delay this process. The citizens deserve to be heard. Thank you. Thank you, Dick. Thank you, Dick. That would be it this evening. Okay, no more public forum uh, under mayor's announcements. I believe I will be brief this evening for a change. Um, first of all, I would like to uh, thank uh, AFSCME Local 2039, uh, which is our uh, DPW union, um, regarding the um, call box out at King Park on the south side. Uh, we have raised uh, $1,500, uh, $2,000 so far? $2,000 to date, and they have stepped up with an extra $500 uh, for that cause. So we now have $2,500 toward that call box. I believe that call box is on order for $3,150, so $650 more. And we get that uh, much needed emergency call box at zero cost to the taxpayers as far as, uh, as, far as uh, uh, materials costs go at least. So thank you very much to the DPW union, Ask Me Local 2039. Not pertaining at all to that matter, um, on Garbage pickup and recycling. Um, this, uh, this was uh, discussed a uh, couple months back um, with the uh, same union uh, regarding garbage pickup. Uh, when we went to uh, recycling on every garbage pickup day as opposed to every second week, um, and you could mix your, your paper in with your, your plastic, et cetera. That is not going to change. However, we did go with black garbage bags, and that has caused some issues, uh, being with the black garbage bags, not being, being able to identify what is in those garbage bags. And uh, we've had uh, some issues with uh, people putting things in the garbage that actually does not belong in the garbage, such as some hazardous waste or things of the sort. Um, and uh, uh, we have uh, decided to go back with the clear or opaque garbage bags. Um, it will not change the garbage schedule pickup. It will not change anything with the, it will not change the recycling schedule. You'll still be able to put your recyclables out in blue bags every week. Um, however, uh, at the same time, uh, we will be going back to clear or, or the opaque white bags uh, that are visible through them. Uh, this is going to be uh, instituted um, on October 1st, give people time to use up the black bags that they've stockpiled. Um, and we will have a bit of a, uh, of a cushion in between there. Uh, at the same time, I'd like to address um, on bags themselves. We've had some people that are using the uh, so-called Piggly Wiggly bag for recyclables, the little small blue bag, which is about a two-gallon bag, um, and putting out 30 to 40 of those with their recyclables. Uh, we do have a requirement of a minimum of a 13-gallon bag. There's a reason for that. It's not to get people to buy 13-gallon bags. I mean, we don't make any money off of garbage bags in this city. 
Uh, but as far as uh, the manpower it takes to lift up all these tiny bags and the time it takes to put them into, into the recyclable vehicle, uh, just so people know that uh, we do have minimum gallon bags. Because I have had several calls in my office recently of people that say they're saving money by using the, the tiny bags. Um, just so everybody understands, 13 gallon bags, and that's an issue of, uh, of uh, uh, manpower and how, how much time it takes to pick up you know, 30 or 40 little tiny bags. So, uh, Just so we're clear on that, um, I believe that is about all I have on mayoral announcements. Going into the next item, which will be information regarding open aldermanic seats. Um, as we know, there, are, there is a vacancy in the first district at the moment and an upcoming vacancy as of tomorrow in district number two. Uh, any person that is interested in either of these aldermanic seats should send a letter of interest and a, a letter explaining uh, background, you know, may you, why, why you may be interested in serving on the Common Council to the city clerk's office no later than Friday, September 3rd. Um, at the next Common Council meeting, which is actually three weeks from today because this is a uh, five Monday month, um, which would be September, Tuesday, September 7th, the day after Labor Day. Interested parties will be given a chance to speak to the alder persons prior to them voting to seat someone for district number one and district number two. So if you're interested in serving on the Common Council, uh, this beats the heck out of running a two or three month campaign. You can uh, um, obviously uh, run about a five minute speech and uh, uh, get, your, uh, get your feet wet, so to speak. Um, in, uh, in city government. Um, I hope that we get a lot of interest in these positions. Um, I, uh, I am looking forward to people coming forward in both of these, both of these districts. Alderman Hanna, did you have a comment? Yeah, just a, just a question. Uh, they'll serve out the remainder of all they will, the They will serve until the spring election, correct, Sue? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Until the, until the April general election. Okay, um, that is all I have for mayor's announcements and information regarding the open aldermanic seats. Switching to the consent agenda. Um, items 10-1 through 10-21, Vice President Rinflesh. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm going to accept and file all ROs, accept and adapt all RCs, and pass all resolution and ordinances from 10-1 to 10-21 in the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion and a second uh, on the consent agenda under discussion. There is no discussion. Roll call, please. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. And Bowers? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion <coughs> carries. Communications and petitions, 10 22, to be referred. Reports of officers, 2. 10 26, by the purchasing agent submitting a report relative to the design and installation of a new vehicle fueling facility at the municipal service building. Um, Excuse I, me, Mayor. Yes. It's been decided that that needs to go to Public Works. Yes, that will be referred to Public Works. Thank you. Um, reports of officers to continuing 1023 through 1027 will be referred. Resolutions introduced three. 10 28 by Alderman Boring, Boren authorizing entering into a contract for the provision and installation of a new vehicle fueling station for the municipal service building. I add that will hold. Or to that public. Will that will go to Public Works also. Yes. Are we finished with that one now? We're done with that one. Great, great. <laughs> okay, 10-29 by Alderman Hammond, authorizing the Redevelopment Authority to retain outside legal counsel to represent the Redevelopment Authority in connection with removal of a restrictive covenant on the former Walmart parcel. Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I need a motion to suspend, or I make a motion to suspend the rules. Second. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules under discussion on the suspension of the rules. Do we want an explanation? Vice President please. Rindfleisch? Explanation, please. Time is of the essence in this matter um, due to some uh, things that are pending. 
Um, so we need to get this in and, and approved quickly so that the uh, Michael Best can get working on it. Sufficient explanation. Is anybody opposed to suspending the rules? If there is no opposition. They're suspended. Please continue. Thank you. Um, Mr. Mayor, I make a, a motion that we, uh, I move that we uh, accept or put the resolution upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. If there is no discussion, roll call please. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Koth? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Longman? Aye. Warren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. And Decker? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries 10-30 by Alderman Hammond for the consideration and adoption on an initial resolution relating to industrial development revenue bond financing on behalf of RCS Empowers Incorporated. As required by state law, information regarding the expected job impact of the project to be financed with bonds of the project site and elsewhere in the state of Wisconsin will be available at the time of consideration of the initial resolution. Alderman Hammond. Got all that in one breath. Again, I move that we uh, pass uh, that we pass the resolution. Accept the resolution upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. Alderman Boren. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I got a question for Attorney McLean. Uh, Attorney McLean, is this uh, property going to be on the property tax rolls? I don't believe so. I believe RCS is uh, tax exempt. It's a 501c3. It's tax exempt. Uh, is this an opportunity to get some uh, payments in lieu of services? Or payments uh, for services in lieu of taxes? Um, what they're requesting is for the city to authorize, uh, at least initially, um, issuance of industrial development revenue bond financing so that they can uh, build onto their facility. Uh, I don't believe there's been any discussion with RCS as far as uh, any, any sort of quid pro quo for uh, adopting the initial resolution. Uh, basically what it does is allows them to use the uh, city's statutory industrial revenue bond uh, authority to get a lower interest rate. Uh, it's not a, it's not a uh, obligation of the city uh, that's that the taxpayers are on the hook for uh, I guess it's up to the council as to whether you want to hold off on this I don't know what their timing is I think they're interested in uh, constructing their project as soon as possible but really haven't had much discussion I don't know if anyone else has thank you Steve Alderman Bourne Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> well, I guess we did this, I think we did this last year or the year before for uh, Safe Harbor, and uh, we didn't talk to them about payments in lieu of uh, taxes, so I guess I wouldn't well, want, wouldn't want to pursue it then if, coming back to my memory, that we did the same thing for Safe Harbor. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Any further discussion? There is no further discussion. Roll call, please. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Ka? Aye. <coughs> Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wongman? Aye. Warren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. And Hammond? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries 10 31 by Alderman Hammond relating to waiver of section 66.110311B1 in connection with an industrial development revenue bond financing on behalf of RCS Empowers Incorporated. Once again, Alderman Hammond. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. If there is none, roll call, please. Heidemann? Aye. Kopp? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Hammond. Aye. And Hannah. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 10-32 through 10-34 to be referred. 
Report of Committee 6, 10-35, by Law and Licensing, recommending denying taxi cab driver's license number 7760 based upon her ineligibility for the license and her oral withdrawal of her application. Vice President Rinfleisch. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the committee be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt. Under discussion? Is uh, Brenda Villarreal here? She is not, Your Honor. Please continue. Uh, we are not surprised she's not here uh, because she did uh, call me and ask that uh, we remove her uh, application at this time. Um, however, um, it was also seen that she was ineligible for the said application. Uh, so we do need to actually deny at this point in time so she can begin the process over again next time around. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Vice President Rinfleisch. Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Excuse me. Cut. Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wongman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Boak? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. And Heidemann? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Report of Committee 7, 10-36, by Public Protection and Safety, recommending filing resolution number 62-10-11 by Alderpersons Bowers, Wangaman, and Heidemann, calling for a referendum on abandoning the city's fire-based ambulance service. Alderperson Montemayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move um, that we accept and file the RC. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and file under discussion. I'm sorry, who did the second, Jeremy? Thank you. Alderman Decker. Motion and a second to accept, accept and, and file the report of committee, correct? Accept and adopt the report of committee. Which is the most appropriate for the RC? For an RC, you said to accept and file. Well, the, we should be saying for accept and adopt for an RC. Right, because we? it states that the resolution be filed. Yes. Okay. Motion to accept and adopt and a second by Alderman Decker under discussion. If there is no discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Report of Committee 8, 10-37, by the Committee of the Whole, recommending calling for a referendum on abandoning the city's fire-based ambulance service and passing the attached substitute resolution. Vice President Rinfleisch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the Report of Committee be accepted and adopted and the substitute resolution be put upon its passage. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt and send the substitute resolution upon its passage under discussion. Alderperson Montemayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm assuming that agenda item 1036 doesn't have anything to do with 1037 because this is a substitute resolution? Right. Or did we actually <laughs> file the referendum? Steve? <laughs> you uh, accept and adopted the committee report, which was to file resolution 62 dash 10 dash 11 um, what you have before you now is committee report from the committee of the whole that a substitute resolution be adopted I think that's separate from res 62 dash 10 dash 11 thank you Steve so I would make a motion to amend agenda item number 1037 and the substitute resolution is on the back Okay, go back again. What did you just say? Amend the substitute resolution. Okay. Um, and that amendment would be? The amendment would be that um, a resolution calling for an advisory referendum on abandoning the city's fire-based ambulance service in the first sentence, and then in the be it further resolved that the Common Council shall consider taking such actions as are necessary to carry out the decision of the electorate on said referendum question so that we can discuss and decide if it is the best after we get all the numbers if the referendum were to pass or to fail. Okay, if we can uh, have a quick uh, rundown on that, sir. We have an advisory referendum on abandoning the city's fire-based ambulance service. Okay, the 
First Amendment would be to change the first paragraph to read a resolution calling for an advisory, advisory referendum yes. on abandoning the city's fire-based ambulance service. Right. Okay, but then you go down to the first be it further resolved. Right. Um, and you want that to stay in? Well, we should consider rather than shall. Shall consider action? Yeah. as are necessary to carry out the decision of the electorate. Now, that states that if the electric's, electric, elect, electorate, of course it is an advisory. Right. Hmm. Okay, that's what she wants. Uh, Attorney McLean, does that make sense, what I'm just saying? Am I using the correct words? That we shall a actually, the council then will have the final action uh, you may want to say, if you're looking at making it an advisory and the be it further resolved, uh, that the council uh, shall take such actions as it deems appropriate, perhaps. Thank you. To yes, carry those out are the decision words. of the electorate on said referendum question. Yes, thank you, Steve. Those are better words. That the Common Council so shall take such actions as are deemed appropriate. <laughs> to carry out. <laughs> as opposed to necessary. Would you like consider in there still, Steve? Shall consider actions? That's fine. Consider such actions and so. as it deems appropriate, I would say. As it Second. deems appropriate. Okay. So we have a resolution calling for an advisory referendum on abandoning the city's fire-based ambulance service, be it further resolved that the Common Council shall consider such actions as it deems appropriate to carry out the decision of the electorate on said referendum question. Alder Thank Person you. Montemayor, does yes. that work? Yes. Do we have a second on that? I'll second it for discussion. We have a motion and a second under discussion on the amendment. We have Alderman Versi? Thank you, Mr. Chair. On the amendment only. On the, yes, it's on the amendment. Um, actually, it'll be to change the date. Um, if you look into going January 1st, 2012, there will be a lot more expenditures as far as unemployment goes. Um, as far as if we need to relieve some paramedics from their duties, if this passes, if there's no more ambulance service, if we get rid of a lot of ifs, if you get rid of four new paramedics, that's four paramedics that'll be on the unemployment, which is rough, roughly about $10,000 a year. And unemployment right now is 24 months. So that's around $80,000 if you wait till January instead of July 31st. So I guess end the amendment. We're, we're on the we're, first amendment. We're on the first amendment right now. Okay. Yeah, we have to decide on the first amendment before we can have a second amendment to the There's first amendment. There's a discussion amendment. under the amendment. Correct, Sue. Well, the, the, what we're discussing right now is changing to an advisory and to consider it um, as it deems appropriate to carry out the decision. Okay. And then you, you want to change the date, is that what you're saying? Yeah. In the question, from January 1 to? July 31st. July 31st. 2011. Uh, Steve. I think that's a separate question, uh, Alderman Versi. I Not think add in. should council should address the first amendment, Thank either up or down, and then to the extent uh, sure. you've got another amendment to make, make that as a separate. Okay. Okay. We'll make another one. Thank you, Alderman Versi. On the first okay. amendment, all okay. Vice yes. President Rindfleisch. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I seconded for discussion purposes um, for basically the same reasons that I've told people have asked me about you know, making it. Um, uh, a referendum that we absolutely have to follow or make it an advisory referendum. Uh, I told them all the same thing. I'm up for re-election. Uh, and if my constituents overwhelmingly support um, moving the city-owned fire uh, service uh, to Orange Cross or some other entity, uh, and I don't follow up with that motion, I'm not, I won't win, <laughs> quite, quite clearly. Uh, so my opinion is advisory or otherwise doesn't really make, make the difference. I think the people's voice will be heard one way or the other, uh, and uh, uh, certainly I will follow in that direction. Um, that they choose, so choose to do so. Uh, the one thing I do like about advisory, though, is to make sure that, um, as Attorney McLean had pointed out, um, you're guaranteeing a particular date. What if a said service uh, gives us the lowest bid uh, in either July 31st or January 1st, 2012? 
Um, but the lowest bid actually says, well, give us to March 1st. Um, I think having advisory allows us to go in that direction and say, okay, you are the lowest bidder. Uh, we don't have to subsidize you. We'll give you the extra three months because you know, we've allowed for the advisory instead of ha you know, having it just uh, uh, you know, straight as is. Uh, if that saves money, then I'm all for that. Uh, whereas if someone offers the lowest bid and can't meet the deadline that we've, we've given them within the referendum question, you know, I, I'd hate to have to spend more money on somebody than somebody who's be willing to do it for less. Uh, so we'll support uh, changing it to a uh, uh, referendum. But uh, just so the public knows is that uh, I do intend to follow through with uh, their will uh, as, in the, as stated within the referendum question. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President Rindfleisch. Alderman Hanna. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And this is somewhat germane to the revised one, but I think we can simply address all the person Rindfleisch's question by saying beginning no later than January 1st, 2012. So if somebody was to come forward earlier, it would still be con it would still be consistent on that. So I just I think this puts a drop dead date in, but also would give us the flexibility that if somebody came earlier in the process and it worked, fine. So uh, and the phone calls I've been getting have asked that it uh, that it be a binding referendum. Um, phone calls have been both pro and con for it, uh, but consistently they want a binding referendum. Okay, thank you. Alderman Hanna, still under discussion on the amendment. Alderman Bowers. <clears throat> We've gone through this now for over six months and to tell the electorate that it's not a binding why, why even vote phone calls that I have received by electorate, along with Marks, is that they want a binding referendum. So therefore, that's what we're elected to do, is carry out what we've been instructed to do. So therefore, I think we should vote on this tonight and make it a binding resolution. Okay. <coughs> do we have any further discussion? Alderman Wangaman? <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think the council has amply demonstrated in the past that we can't seem to make up our mind on this one. <laughs> and uh, I would hate to see it being tossed back and forth again a half a dozen times. <clears throat> and as Alderman Bowers and Alderman Hanna pointed out, the phone calls I've been getting is, uh, people are pro and con on this whole issue, but they want a binding a referendum. They want to be able to make the decision. They think it's high time that now, that it's their turn to step up and uh, make the decision. I know the media has said the council is shirking their responsibility by not uh, coming to a, a solid decision on this, but we've, uh, I think, demonstrated that it doesn't work here. It, uh, we're too divided on this, and so I think it's our duty to make it a binding referendum so that the people can make an absolute decision on this, and I think it's their right to do so. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Wagaman. Alderman Polk. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I have to agree with my colleague, Alderman Wongerman, in that I think we've demonstrated an inability to come to a conclusion on this. We had a chance to accomplish the same thing a few weeks ago by not hiring four additional firefighters. That would have forced that conversation. Um, I'd encourage people out, uh, uh, taxpayers, um, <coughs> Perhaps we can get Channel 8 to rebroadcast our Committee of the Whole meeting from a couple of weeks ago. There was about probably a 45 or 60 minute conversation on this very issue. So we won't relive that tonight. But if you want to get more educated and talk about the things we talk or understand the things we talked about, encourage Channel 8 to rebroadcast that. Um, everything that I've heard from my constituents say that same thing. You guys have, have for three years, uh, folks have been pushing this and pushing this. Um, for all the right reasons, and we haven't been able to, uh, to, to vote in any decisive way. So as much as I am sort of notionally against referenda in general, I'm going to support this referendum, and I'm going to suggest that it stay binding. And, and again, the, the folks that are on the side of the, the, uh, the conversation that want it to be binding and that want it to pass, I think we're in for some unintended consequences. And given the deep pockets of the forces aligned on the other side of the fence, they may very well lose. Uh, we may very well hear from the public by who turns out for that vote that we're going to keep that ambulance. So given that, the electorate has told me, my electorate has told me that they want it to be binding and that's who I'm going to vote.
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Bulk. And uh, I agree on the rebroadcast of that committee of the whole meeting because I missed the second half of it myself. So, thank you. Okay. Uh, under further discussion on the amendment only, I do not see any more lights. Uh, we will take a roll call vote on the amendment. On the amendment, a yes vote will be to amend. Everybody clear on what the amendment is? Mm -hmm. I see everybody nodding. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Radke. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Versi? No. Wangaman? No. Boren? No. Bauk? No. Bowers? No. Decker? No. Hammond? No. Hannah? No. Heidemann? No. Kath? No. And Montemayor? Aye. Four ayes, ten noes. The amendment fails. Back to the original question, um, which is resolution number. 62-10-11 and the substitute resolution. Vice President Renflesh. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Alderman Hannah hit on a couple of points that uh, I want to uh, bring up again uh, that we did discuss at the Committee of the Whole meeting. Uh, and two questions I think remain now that we've uh, made it um, a binding resolution. Just two small points I think need to be clarified just to the taxpayer's benefits. Uh, one is the statement of a private ambulance service. I think we need to open that up to private, nonprofit, or perhaps change the word to most cost efficient ambulance service. Um, I hate for someone to say, well, private means for profit, and we can't give it to Southern Orange Cross, somebody else that is a not for profit. So clarify that just simply saying, um, favor, of a, favor of the most cost effective ambulance service, which I don't think is changing anything. Uh, except just opening that up to whoever runs an ambulance service. Uh, and then, uh, as Alderman Hanna pointed out, changing the beginning January 1st, 2012 to beginning no later than January 1st, 2012. Again, if there is a more cost-effective um, date that someone want, can begin earlier than that to save taxpayers money, I think we should uh, allow for that as well, versus simply saying December 30th you can't start, December 34th you can't start, January 1st you can. Um, it's also a holiday, so perhaps someone else will want to have a different date for beginning an ambulance service as well. And the date's um, actually 20, 20, uh, 2012. 2012, excuse me. Yeah. Um, so uh, those, those you, I would make a motion to amend stating... Uh, can you read that amendment sure. back to us, please? Um, uh, change the second line to in favor of the most cost-effective ambulance service beginning no later than January 1st, 2012. Second. The most cost effective <laughs> ambulance service beginning <coughs> no later than January 1st, 2012. 2012. <coughs> okay. We have a motion and a second for the. Uh, Referendum question to read, shall the city of Sheboygan abandon its fire department based ambulance service in favor of the most cost effective service, the most cost effective ambulance service beginning no later than January 1, 2012. That is the amendment proposed and seconded under discussion on this amendment. I have to wait again. Alderman Versi? I have to wait until this amendment goes away. <laughs> okay, Alderman Bowers, would you like to comment on this amendment? Hmm. I certainly would. Uh, I think this body is uh, able to make a decision cost effective. That, that's kind of an ambiguous term because we'll end up in another argument a year from now or six months from now. It'll be, it'll be four or five saying this one is cost effective, the other one. Then we'll have another referendum. So I think we're able to make that decision on our own. Regarding cost effective, I think what is ever the best interest in the city of Sheboygan, and the cost is important, but not the most important thing. Thank you, Alderman Bowers. Um, I kind of wonder, though, if the council can't come to a decision on the ambulance service, if they can come to a decision on cost effectiveness. So, yeah. uh, next uh, we have Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I certainly. Um, I'm in favor of the no later than date. I think that's a great idea. Keeps us out of that. But 
the term most cost effective now, maybe somebody can clarify this, but would that mean that the fire department could now rebid for the services if they could come back and prove that they're the most cost effective? I'm not trying to pick on you, I just, it does seem to me like it could open the door. Uh, for Vice President Rinfleisch, I'll open up the thank floor you. for a response. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, that Sorry, don't yell It's not my intention. I think the public wants to, to have a say on, on this, and it, it's clear it's going to be city run, fire department, or something else. Uh, and I don't really intend to open that up to anything. So if it's the committee's say, instead of saying most cost effective, simply say private and or but that's fine yes. as well. I mean, that's my intent is, is to get at I'm not just trying to find what private is. I'm saying yeah. some kind of non-government run. Maybe that would be the way to change it then. Either way, so I'll leave it for yeah. further discussion or I can change mine to Constant. public. Um, I'll change my motion to amend to keeping the uh, beginning no later than and changing private or my amendment of most cost effective to private and or nonprofit or non-government run. Non -government. We'll change non-government run ambulance service. I'll, I'll second that. Okay, so you wanted to read now, shall the city of Sheboygan ban its fire department based ambulance service in favor of a non-government run ambulance service. In favor of a non-government operated. Perfect. Ambulance service beginning no later than January 1, 2012. Yes. Good. Do we have a second on that? Yes. Motion and a second on that amendment. Got that, Sue? Oh, sure. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So do we all know what the uh, question is, the, the revised amended question? Under discussion on the revised amended question only, Alderman Boren? Thank you, Mayor. Just to have uh, the city clerk uh, Read, back, read, read the latest Please. back to us. Thanks, Alderman Bourne. Um, it would, the question would read, shall the city of Sheboygan abandon, now correct me if I'm wrong, Alderman Rinflesh, its fire department-based ambulance service in favor of a non-government operated ambulance service uh, beginning no later than January 1, 2012? Yes. Okay. Okay, <coughs> we have the question. Uh, under discussion on the amended question only, Vice President Rinfleisch, did you have anything more? No. Just didn't turn you off before? Yeah. Alderman Hanna? Nothing? <laughs> Alderman Versi, yes. on the amended question. On the amended question Very only. Good. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, in case this does pass, I still want to put that fact out, just food for thought, for your date. That is an extra $80,000 if you go past the July 31st date. So it's doing your same amendment, but just changing your date would be saving another $80,000 potentially. We can do that next. So. <laughs> Thank you, Alderman Versi. <laughs> Alderperson Montemayor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I think you know, we're going to go ahead and vote on this. I have a question regarding um, conflict of interest with Alderman Versi. Okay. The question is regarding conflict of interest regarding Alderman Versi, and I will refer this graciously to our city attorney. <laughs> Steve? Well, I guess I'd say on the issue of uh, whether or not to place a re referendum on the ambulance service before the uh, constituents, uh, I don't see the conflict. Uh, I think uh, it's not taking a position one way or another. Uh, as it stands, uh, the date push back to no later than January 2012. Uh, I don't see that it, it would just be conjecture to say that it's necessarily going to be Orange Cross that would get the contract if if the electorate were to vote in favor of the the uh, referendum. So I think it's it, uh, in my opinion, it would not create a conflict of interest for all the person versi to vote on this resolution. Thank you, Attorney McLean. That answers your question, Alder Person Montemayor? Yes. Thank you. Alderman Hanna? Yeah, I just, I just thank, wanted to- and Thank you, Steve. I just wanted to weigh in on that. I, I see no conflict uh, with this. We're not talking about any individual services. Um, sometime down the road, uh, if Orange Cross becomes one of the top two or three candidates, that's Alderman Versi's choice. 
I, I, how to do it. I think we've, we've beaten this horse plenty. <laughs> and uh, I think it's perfectly appropriate for him to vote on this. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Um, okay, uh, the question under discussion now is the appropriateness of Alderman Versi to vote or not to vote on this issue. We've heard Attorney McLean. Uh, Alderman Bowers. I'm, I'm sorry. I, uh... Okay, thank you. Okay, if we have no further discussion, we will go back to the question, which is the revised amended question, which reads, Sue? Shall the city of Sheboygan abandon its fire department-based ambulance service in favor of a non-government operated ambulance service beginning no later than January 1, 2012? An I vote would be to approve that wording. So an I vote would be to approve the revised substitute referendum question. No. Is everybody clear on that? No, no. This is an amendment we have to, to vote on. This is just the amendment. Oh. Yeah. The revised amendment. The revised amend amendment. There you go. Thank you. Everybody, everybody clear on the, on the question? An I vote would be to approve the revised amendment. Everybody's clear? Okay, roll okay. call please. <laughs> Rinfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? No. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? No. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. And Radke? Aye. 12 ayes, two noes. Motion carries. Okay, are we still, uh, can we go on to the next one? We're still on that one now. We're still uh, on this we're one. We're done with that amendment, but we still have to. Vote on the unless action. Unless there's other amendments, we still have to pass the substitute resolution as amended. Okay, we're looking for a motion to pass the substitute resolution as amended, Vice President Rinfleisch. That's the motion I'd like to make. So I'd still like to um, accept and adopt the report of committee and pass the as amended uh, substitute resolution Second. and put that very, on a passage. Thank you. Very well said. Under discussion, Alderman Bowers. Just one thing I'd like to point out that Alderman Versi um, said is uh, we might have some money concerns here and I believe he used the date of uh, July 1st, 2011 had to do something with uh, wages and benefits and things like that. So. Would it be to our benefit to amend this instead of uh, January 1st, 2012 to July 1st, 2011? Are you making an amendment or are you asking? I, I would make an amendment. 31st. So you're, you're proposing an amendment to the question to change the <coughs> to July 31st, 2011? Yes. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second and a third. Um, <laughs> under discussion, Alderman Bauk. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would uh, just remind my colleague that we don't need this amendment. It's built in no later than. If, if the good people that are on the committees that run this thing think we can do it earlier, we will. We're a bunch of penny pinchers. We're gonna do it earlier. We don't need this extra amendment in my judgment, and I'm gonna vote against it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Bauk, Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I'm also going to vote against it for the reason that uh, if this resolution, uh, if this referendum passes to get out of the ambulance business, uh, it's going to be the fire chief's decision as to whether, as to whether or how long those four individuals stay on the payroll. And uh, I would think that uh, if that if that issue came up with. Uh, laying those individuals off before July 31st, I think the council can make that decision. I don't think we have to make that decision now. So Maybe. I'm not going to support it. Thank you, Alderman Boren. And uh, um, I do have a budget to put together for 2011, um, which, uh, if it is July 31st, 2011, hinges greatly. Um, it's pretty hard to put a budget together when you don't know if you are going to have a source of revenue or <coughs> expenditure, no matter which way you want to look at it, uh, in the middle of the year. So I just want to make that clear. 
Any further discussion? Mayor? Yes. Uh, Alderman Bowers, did you mean to, um, in the motion, say no later than July 31st, 2012? Yes. 11, I'm sorry? Uh, 2011, yes. 2011, no yeah. later than. Right. Okay. Can we have the uh, amended, proposed amended referendum question, please, sir? Um, shall the city of Sheboygan abandon its fire department based ambulance service in favor of a non government operated service beginning no later than July 31st, 2011? So the between this question and the last is the is July the 31st, 2011 date. Yes. Uh, deadline. Any further discussion on the date? A yes vote on this would change the date to July 31st, 2011, as opposed to January 1st, 2012. Is everybody clear on that? No later than. There's no. So, no, 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 I just said no later than. Right. Yeah, that's all. It would be no later than July 31st, 2011. And no later than uh, December 31st. Right. No, the motion that's on the floor right now. Motion. Right. But right. the one we passed before was no later than right. January, January 1, 2012. And, and, and I vote will change the date to July 31st, 2011. A no vote will keep the date at January 1st, 2012. Everybody clear on that? Roll call, please. Vanderweel? No. <clears throat> Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? No. Bauk? No. Bowers? Aye. Uh, yes. I'm, I'm sorry, was that a yes? Yes. Two yeses. <laughs> I, I thought it sounded like two yeses. Don't want them. <laughs> Call them twice. Uh, Decker? No. Hammond? No. Hannah? No. Heidemann? No. Kath? No. Montemayor? No. Radke? No. And Rinfleisch? No. All right. 11 eyes and th I'm sorry. The other way around. Three eyes and 11 no's. Motion fails. Give this another whirl, Vice President Rinfleisch. <laughs> Do we need to make a motion or previous motion still stands? Previous one still stands. Previous motion still stands. The motion and who had the second? The Alderman second. Hannah had the second on the uh, revised referendum question. Can we get away with that? Uh, to accept and adopt the report of committee and to pass the substitute resolution as amended. amended. As amended, under discussion. If there is none, roll call please. Oh, Alderman Bauk. <laughs> I beat you. Alderman Hammond, were you in there? He beat you to it. He did. Isn't this Apparently, I wasn't that good at uh, Family times? Feud when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah. um, I just uh, want to commend the folks that have uh, uh, stood behind this for so long, opposing th this ambulance. Great conversation, a difficult conversation, but it's a great exercise in uh, individual liberties and why this country is great. Um, the reason for the referendum is because we've completely, uh, the taxpayers feel like they've completely lost control of this city, and frankly, they probably have. Um, when this body can't decide to save the taxpayers a quarter of a million dollars over three years because we're worried that the, uh, the labor unions may grieve that, may grieve saving our taxpayers a quarter of a million dollars over three years. When we are worried about that being grieved and us losing, that is time for, metaphorically, the taxpayers to get their pitchforks and storm City Hall. And that's what this is. This is the taxpayers saying, we don't trust you anymore. We want control. We, you've abdicated your leadership. We're taking over. And, and so I just really want to encourage those people who have had the courage and tenacity uh, and stick with itness. Uh, to get it to this point, and I hope we'll pass this referendum tonight. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Bauk. Alderman Hammond, can you beat that? No, not even going to try, <laughs> although I'm glad you said metaphorically because I don't <laughs> pitch pork brigades. That's years ago. <laughs> um, I, the only thing I'd like to point out is one of the things that hasn't been talked about in this uh, resolution is that there is going to be five public listening sessions um, throughout this process as we lead into the referendum. I would hope and pray that throughout this time period, the only information that's getting out there is you know, sound information based off of facts and figures, not based off of rhetoric and everything else we've been hearing over the last, at least since my time on the council. So I would encourage both sides to please stick to the facts you know, as we're debating this issue and let, the, let the, uh, our constituents make an informed 
intelligent decision based off the facts and not rhetoric. That's my thank you very much. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Under further discussion, Alderman Balk, do you have something better? Yes, sir. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Mayor. Last One last point. Uh, um, uh, my, my colleague is a man of numbers, and he knows the numbers tell both sides of the story, depending on which numbers you talk about. And so as we discussed at the Committee of the Whole meeting last week, this is going to become a high school popularity contest. Whoever spends more, and there are deep pockets on one side of this argument, whoever spends more to spread their story is probably going to win this. And that's why I wish... Uh, the folks, the citizens who are behind this, I wish them good luck because I'm, I'm afraid there's a very real possibility they may lose because the other side may spend more to tell their story. And as much as I wish uh, Alderman Hammond uh, uh, could be right and Chair of Finance Hammond could be right, um, this is going to devolve into a factless, tell my side of the story, uh, popularity contest. And it's going to be very interesting to see what happens in November. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Balk, and, uh, and I do agree that uh, uh, if we get clear numbers, numbers <coughs> can't lie. So I think that's, uh, that's what everybody needs to look at, uh, not pertaining to this question right now, uh, but if this question does succeed and it is a referendum item, um, that people look at the facts and not the emotion, not the rhetoric. Um, look at the facts and, and know the ramifications one way or the other of which way that you vote on this issue. Thank you for everybody and uh, all the input. And now we will vote on the question. Does everybody know what they're voting on? <laughs> yes. Yes, 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 we do. You all do, right? <laughs> Terrific. Um, Versi. Aye. Wongman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Koth? Aye. Montemayor? No. Radke? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. And Vanderweel? No. 12 ayes and two noes. Motion carries. Moving on. Ordinances introduced 10. 10 38 by Alderpersons Hannah Vanderweel and Versi establishing this salary for the finance director slash treasurer. Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Oh, Alderman Hanna, could we get a suspension first? Oh. May I ask for a suspension of the rules? Second. We have a motion to sus and a second on suspension of the rules. Mr. Mayor, may I have an opportunity to explain why? Vice President Rinfleisch, would you like that? Absolutely. Uh, at Please this particular do. point, we do not have a finance director. And in my opinion, uh, we have the opportunity to hire a very fine finance director. And I think it would be foolish of us not to take advantage of this. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. On suspension of the only under discussion. If there is no discussion, is anybody opposed to the rules being suspended? If nobody is, the rules are suspended. Alderman Hanna, please continue. Okay, so we've got, I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. second. We have a motion and a second and a third to put the ordinance upon its passage. Under discussion? Thank Alderman Bow. What a fantastic candidate. Uh, what a fantastic resume, what a fantastic search process. Uh, for those people that are writing newspaper articles and newspaper letters saying we can't bring decent people into the government of Sheboygan, uh, I, need to, I need to take a look at this resume. This will be a fine addition to this team, uh, the, the power team of Chairperson Hammond uh, and this new potential candidate and uh, the leadership from the Office of the Mayor on this. Uh, I think our chances of delivering a 2011 budget just really go through the roof if we approve this tonight. Bravo on this candidate. I concur, Alderman Buck. Thank you. Alderman Hanna. Thank you. Uh, it, it is rare uh, that a citizen with this qualification would walk away from the private sector and offer public service. And this is clearly a movement towards public service. I don't want to make public what, what he accomplished and, and his level of compensation in the private sector. Um, this is a fraction of where he's been, and we are very fortunate that he lives in Kohler and is looking forward to moving into Sheboygan. 
and I think uh, his talents combined with Mr. Hammond, I think we're going to have a strong finance direction going forward. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Vice President Rinfleisch? Uh, just a point of clarification. Right now we're simply voting on the ordinance to establish the salary. Is that correct? Are we also voting on? We are simply voting on establishing the salary at right. this point. Very good. Um, uh, after so the salary is established, we will consider appointing um, a new finance director. Just to clarify that, that those are voting for it or against it, uh, the document would, only, would not be doing so based on the gentleman involved. Um, on the appointment, simply on the establishing the, uh, the salary rates. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that, uh, Vice President Rinfleisch. Any further discussion on the salary for the finance director slash treasurer? If there is none, roll call, please. Longman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Boak. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Koth. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. And Versi. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Um, now we will have the confirmation of mayor's appointments on the finance director, Attorney McLean. This is dated uh, today's date. Honorable members of the council hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. James M. Amodio to be appointed as finance director for a five-year term contingent upon successful completion of the six-month probationary period commencing August 23, 2010 and expiring August 22, 2015. Signed by the mayor. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Vice President Rinfleisch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that um, we uh, accept the appointment. Second. Excuse me, could we get in the suspension, please? Yeah, we need a suspension on the appointment. Oh, sorry. Uh, find myself in an awkward position of actually asking for suspension. <laughs> would, would anybody like uh, Vice President Rinfleisch to explain the suspension? No. Second. In, pain, <laughs> in painful detail. Second. <laughs> um, as we discussed, um, we've now created the position and established salary for the position. Uh, it would be nice to have the person start on the date, uh, August 23rd, as uh, stated on the uh, previous document, um, so we can help finish with the budget. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President Rinfleisch. We have a motion and a second. Alderman Hanna, did you second on that motion? Yes, I did. Okay, we have a motion and a second to appoint for finance. Oh, to suspend the rules. We're we still at suspension? <clears throat> We're still at suspension. Okay, is there anybody opposed to the rules being suspended? If there is not, the rules are suspended. Vice President Rinfleisch. Thank you, Your Honor. I ask that we uh, accept the appointment. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept the appointment of James Amod Amodeo. Amodio. No, it's Amodeo. Amodio. Yes. Okay. I told him I'd get his name right because he stuck with it for the next five years. So James Amodio, Jim Amodio, to be our next finance director in the city under discussion. If there is none, roll call, please. Boren. Aye. Bo Aye. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Hammond? Enthusiastically, aye. Wow. Like that? <laughs> Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. And Wangaman? Aye. 14 ayes. I'll vote aye also. Motion carries. Right, okay. uh, uh, congratulations to our new finance director. Jim, if you could stand up, please. That's an accomplishment. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Moving on, if I can find my spot here once again. 10-39 um, through 1040 lies over. Matters laid over 11, 9-40, resolution number 74-10-11 by Alderperson Kittleson. Approving the corrected amendment number two to lease with Malt Scoop Corporation. All the person, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. If there is none, roll call, please. <clears throat> Bulk. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Koth. Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. And Boren? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 
Other matters authorized by law 10-41 will be referred to finance. Any other matters? Attorney McLean. 10-42 is an RO by the city clerk submitting. No, you need that. Oh, submitting that's right. Those are mine. Thank you. Submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2011 and June 30, 2012. That will be referred to law and licensing. 1043 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Cleo Messner of the bid district requesting permission to hold Harvest Fest on September 25, 2010 at Sheboygan's Riverfront. Will be referred to PPNS. 1044 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a claim from Helen Feld for alleged damages to the shutter at 2305 Wiedemeyer Street. Risk management. 1045 is a committee report by the Special Budget Subcommittee um, advising of uh, the fact that it met and researched potential savings in the 2011 budgets from various departments. Will be referred to the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee. 1046 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a communication from Brenda McBain of the Sheboygan County YMCA requesting permission to host a body pump launch on Saturday, September 11, 2010 in Deland Park across from the YMCA. Will be referred to Public Works. 1047 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a communication from Irma Gutierrez requesting a no parking sign in front of her house at 1327 Pennsylvania Avenue because of safety issues at the corner of South 14th Street and Pennsylvania Avenue. And that will be referred to public protection and safety. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved. Second. Motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, everybody. Aye, aye, aye.